All right, well, we've moved inside. We're here in the furnace room of a early 1950s era Seattle home. Right uh, behind us is an original oil furnace um, with the original ducting, well, mostly original ducting. And as you can see, uh, a lot of the seams were not sealed. And so there are massive areas for improvement. Um, and Aaron, how are we going to do it? How will we seal up these ducts? Well, there's a couple of ways that we could do it. Um, and I'm just going to go with the cleanest, easiest, and also uh, the one that uh, typically HVAC people like to see, which is uh, tape. And uh, this is foil tape. We got this at Ace Hardware. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we're going to Typically, we like to wipe off the area first because tape doesn't stick to dirt very well. Just like um, this. Uh, so, uh, Robbie did some good cleaning here and uh, he, he took off a lot of this dust, but he, we also noticed that there was some soot here too, which, um, as you know, during an oil furnace combustion, um, you'll get some residue, and that residue being fired uh, in the furnace is really an unhealthy situation. You really you want the cleanest air you can get uh, going into the furnace to be combusted. So uh, it's a really good idea to make sure that you do a, as much air, air sealing on the on the uh, on the return as possible, especially if it's in a place where you've got burning oil or, or really anything. But but soot, you really want to keep that out of the system. So okay, the return is actually where the air comes in, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's returning from the house after it's been conditioned mm -hmm. and coming back into the furnace. Um, what some people, that some confusion is the fact that um, the word supply is where the, the air is being supplied to the house, not supplied to the furnace. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the register is a supply. So it may sound backwards to some of you. The return is the intake for the furnace, and the supply is the heat going to the house and not to the furnace. That's right. Kids, listen to this man. He's smart. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take off a little bit of this tape. It's very sticky. Get 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 pretty uh, get pretty used to doing it a couple of times before you get it really good. Uh, that's the kind of guy I am. So and down here, you can you can tell I don't really care about this guy here as long as I get a, a seal just above it. That's fine. And wherever you see exposed seams. Um, that's where you want to do the you do the work here. So uh, this counts. You know you can see. In fact, if we can get a shot of this guy here, this is this is where kind of the rubber hits the road. Clearly, what's happening is that air is being combusted in the oil furnace, and supposedly it's supposed to you know be an entire, an entirely uh, sealed system, but air is leaving here. Clearly, air is moving out of here. And this is where the highest pressures, you got some more here, the highest pressures and highest heats. And now you're really, even if it's just a tiny little hole here, that's still going to, it can it can heat a volume of this this space. Um, and you really want to seal that up. So we're going to we're gonna eventually wipe this down, and we're going to probably put duct mastic in here. Because it's good against drafts, dust, noise, moisture, non-hardening, adheres to metal, wood, plastic, rubber, and painted surfaces. Um, and we're going to use it to... Uh, Seal up this guy here, and this seam here, and this seam here, and a little bit up here. Uh, um, this goes up to a register up in the kitchen, um, and again, uh, we really want to make sure that we're, we're making sure that we're putting the air where it belongs, and we are uh, keeping it away from places where it doesn't. This, we are not trying to heat this area, we are trying to heat up there, so uh, let's get cracking. So take off a little chewy chunk. I wear uh, two sets of gloves here uh, because there's a lot of uh, nails as you can see up there. Uh, uh, this is razor sharp. All the stuff that they used to cut the sheet metal, razor sharp. So uh, make a little have a bee out of it. Of course, you don't want to stick as much to your gloves as it sticks to the uh, area here. That's a lot. I'm going to spread that out. I think I'm actually going to take my glove off of this. 
Oh yeah, way better to do without the glove. If you're doing duct mastic, uh, which is much more of a uh, paste than this, which is much more like a putty, then gloves are a lot better. But here we go, we're just going to smear a good chunk of this on here. It's flexible, it's not going to get hard. Um, it's heat uh, flexible as well, so you don't have to worry about it overheating or uh, making your life hard by uh, sliding on fire or something. Um, and you can see it's sort of movable. And we're really trying to get this, the, the duct sealant all up in there, in that crack. And we're going to try to make it as pretty as we can, but um, really it's much more about effectiveness than it is about the visuals. There's that guy. What you want is a nice tight seal on just about every uh, every duct uh, transition, every duct joining, every every duct junction. You want to uh, every seam. You want to take every seam and seal it up. Uh, this is actually a really well done duct, um, but as you can see here at the very end, there's a sort of like essentially an end cap, and that end cap needs to be sealed all the way around if it's possible. We just did the bottom here just to show you what was going on, but this is a, a place where there's typically, you can see a lot of dirt and dust, and whenever you see dirt and dust, again, it means that airflow is moving around probably more than it should, and you want to eliminate that airflow. So uh, that's what we're doing here at this section.